Well, good morning everyone. My name is Alex. It's great to be able to share with you today. And I'm going to talk about One Hope. So we had Andy do One Baptism and I think we have some more kind of on this theme of One. Um, and it's really about coming back to the basics and um, coming back to the foundations of what it means to be a Christian and, and what we believe. And I'm going to try and keep it simple. Um, I'm going to read a passage. I'm going to talk a bit about what stood out to me in that passage. And then I'm going to kind of apply that to me um, and, and really appreciate, OK, wh why does this give me hope? Um, and then we're going to have a testimony, which I'm very excited to hear as well afterwards. So hopefully that's clear and uh, we're going to jump straight in. So in 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. So this is written by Paul, and it's an interesting kind of timeline because Paul came a bit later, um, and, and he had a vision from Jesus, you know, why are you persecuting me? And Paul was set on persecuting the Christians as false believers. Um, he was a very adamant Jew, um, and he felt this was this was blasphemy this was wrong this idea of christianity who is this jesus so jesus came came and spoke to him um pretty direct but it did the job it had an impact um and that's i think why he's saying as to one abnormally born it's quite an unusual circumstance for him to meet jesus through a vision like that so there are a few things that stood out to me reading this passage Firstly, by the gospel, we are saved. Now, salvation, generally seen as a big part of religion, you, you believe that there's a, this world is temporary and there's a, some sort of afterlife or you know, maybe reincarnation. It depends, but you have a belief that there's something more and you're looking for this salvation and you... You put your, your hope in that thing for your salvation. That's a typical principle of religion. Not all are like that, but many are. And so it's very important when we read, by the gospel, we are saved. It also says, hold firm, right? It's that idea of, it's not going to be easy. There's a challenge. Um, the, the reality is, it's temporary, but it's not easy. And then, very interesting, he says, otherwise, in vain. I think that's hard to <laughs> grasp. Okay, otherwise you've believed in vain? Um, but I think it's this idea of the gospel is so pivotal, right? Either it gives the whole purpose as to why we're Christians, you know, that... Jesus died for our sins, that he gave his life for us and he was the demonstration of, of God and his love. Either we have our hope in that. If that's not true, then then what is it? It's meaningless. And this is what we kind of we want to focus on is that's the the crux of what we believe. Christ died for our sins and was raised again. And this hopefully gives us hope for the future. 
So even this passage I've read, it was an early Christian creed, and we, we kind of make similar references when we get baptised about, you know, Jesus is Lord. We're, we're making a confession of faith and trusting in, in Jesus and not in our own lives or, or the world around us. And, and so the main point uh, that stood out to me from this passage is the hope Jesus gives allows us to hold firm. So we've seen a lot in the past few years. I think that's fair. Um, I'm 24. And if I may say that even the past two decades have been very eventful, we've seen a lot. We've had the tech boom, you know, smartphones, technology, some of you we're what we're watching from home um financial crashes that the chaos of of that brexit covid climate change ukraine war right there's there's a lot that's gone on in the world things which we would probably say wow these are consequential these make a difference to my day-to-day life this is not a passing passing news um these are very real and I think with all those changes, it is hard to find stability. It's hard to have confidence in things when, you know, they, they change so quickly. And I've definitely found times where it's been hard for me to have hope for the future and, and seeing, seeing what goes on, um, the uncertainty. So the question is, well, how, how do we put hope in Christ? And I appreciate this passage, just how direct Paul is. By this gospel, you are saved. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. It really is that foundation I mentioned, that Jesus was the the crucial element that we needed to find salvation with God. So looking back for myself, the, the past few years have been pretty challenging. Um, and I think, you know, it's tempting to think, I, 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 you know, my life's not been that difficult compared to other people and to compare, but I can only speak for myself. I found the last few years challenging in many ways. And with my faith, I'll be, to be honest, that's wavered a lot. I think looking back, I, I realise I have some painful memories associated with faith and church. And when you grow up with church, it has a big influence on who you are. And and, and that's great in many ways, like that's a blessing. But when you realize it has flaws, then it's painful. And it becomes like part of your identity is under attack that by questioning church and and maybe issues that you see, you look to yourself and you think, I'm a product of this. I'm the output of this. And that's a bit scary. That's kind of hard to reflect on and, and say, how has that affected me and my life? It's hard to feel that something you trusted and relied upon as a kind of foundation is suddenly overthrown, crumbles. Because then suddenly, what do you believe? If those things that you saw as a foundation for your life are rocked, what's left? <laughs> like that, that's, that's hard to grasp. Um, and I think many people have wrestled with these things. I've seen a number of practices which I feel are wrong, such as being legalistic, judgmental, showing favoritism, being focused on performance and and numbers instead of a sincere relationship with people. And these things can be subtle, but to me are inconsistent with how we see Jesus live. And when, when I look at myself, I have to admit, I've been guilty of those things. There there there've been habits that I've had which reinforce 
that that judgmental or performance based kind of mindset and it's shocking it's shocking to see that in myself and i think how could i justify these things and i have to often take a step back kind of zoom out and say how how did i get to this point how did i come to accept that it's okay to be judgmental of other people's views and beliefs and i i realize i've lost sight of of the hope of the purpose behind it when i come back to that of by the gospel the good news of jesus we are saved great right it's not it doesn't have to be very complicated and it's not by how successful we are that kind of performance mindset it's not the number of people we convert either we can't earn it god offers it freely and we should be honestly just grateful for that there's no way that we can make up for that now i think there will be times in all of our lives where we get distracted discouraged and even hopeless I've had those times and I'm sure there are more to come. But we need this hope to remind us, why do I live as a Christian? Why did I make that choice? There is a bigger picture that we are part of. That, yes, we think of ourselves as an individual, but we really are part of a body, whether that's our family, our family group our church our country our the world society humanity there are many things that we contribute towards that we're a part of and we do have a purpose to want to to give to help to contribute to that and i think god really has a plan for those things that he wants to see all those things flourish and grow and people helping one another all the time so I hope that we can have that hope, hope in mind, right? That we can remember, despite whatever's going on in my life, Jesus doesn't change, that he is consistent, that he is reliable, that he is the, the foundation that I, I lean on. And I'm excited we're going to have someone share who's been through a lot. And I'm sure, um, you know, they'll tell you all about it, but I'm very grateful for this brother. He's he always has a a kind word to say, an encouragement, but also wisdom. You know that he's experienced things where he he's been through tough times and come out to say, "This is what I learned," and I'm grateful for that and excited that he gets to share that with you today. So, hope you enjoy and and thanks for for hearing my thoughts. Good morning, church. I'm honoured to be sharing the my testimony with you today. My name is Larry Samuels. Uh, uh, for those of you who do not know me, I'm 68 years old. I'm a husband, a father, and a father of seven, and a grandfather of 16 children, grandchildren. I came to Christ late in, the, in my life, uh, having lived a life of sin since my youth. I studied the Bible in Manchester, and uh, I was baptised on the 10th of September 2000. My journey as a Christian was not without challenges and I want to share one of those challenges with you today. In 2012, my kidneys failed. After feeling unwell, I went to the local hospital where I lived and the doctor gave me the news so I shared that news with my wife and the doctor said that I would be on dialysis. At least they will try to see if I can get dialysis because there was nothing they could do for me as I was in a, in a dangerous situation and needed a miracle. Those were his words. After sharing the news with my friends and family and many years on dialysis, a friend called John offered me a kidney. He had tests done to check for compatibility and all the tests went great. And on the 28th of January, 
2018 was a transplant date given to us by the hospital. But in December, just after Christmas, John called me and told uh, uh, December 2017, this is just to be clar clarifying. Uh, he told me that uh, he had developed some health issues and he was no longer uh, considered uh, to be able to give me his kidney because it would affect his health. So he could not be a suitable donor. We shed many tears as we felt uh, that the blessing of God had been taken away from us. And we, uh, well, I, for one, had thought that it's, if it is God's will, then so be it. But I struggled because I thought I was going it was, I was going to be a burden to my wife and I did not want to uh, be a burden. So I dig, dug deep. I continued to pray and God, even when it did not make, make much sense. So I didn't give up and we prayed together, my wife and I continually and the church and many others across the world. Then in January 4th, 2019, um, we got a phone call at 6 a.m. in the morning from the Royal London Hospital offering me a kidney. We were excited and there was lots of tears, lots of tests and the f surgery went well once we had been given the all clear. But however, we were there were complications and uh, I had to endure an operation every week for the next four weeks as I was in hospital for that length of time. It was, I was in tremendous pain. Uh, I became fearful and at one point I prayed that God would take my life. And while I was praying, I heard a voice that said, why are you praying for God to take your life? When God wants to use you broken. I could not see no one in the room and I questioned if I had been dreaming. I realized at this point that God was with me. He had been, he had heard my cry. I started to hope again and I knew that God would pull me through. My pain was only temporary, but it brought me closer to God. I had to go through the pain in order to be healed. God brought brothers and sisters to encourage and pray with me while I was in hospital. And for those many weeks, God was able to use me broken during my stay in hospital. I was able to pray with staff for them and their fam friends and families and, I, and to pray and encourage other patients who were in pain to pray and call on the name of Jesus. God brought me through this tough situation and he continues to work with and through me. I know he will do the same for you too. Never give up. Keep trusting and holding on to God. He is our only hope. Thank you for listening.